but it's the steps to deliverance. Number one, we talked about you have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Personally affirm your faith in Christ. In other words, get saved. Hallelujah. Number two, humble yourself. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Somebody shout hallelujah. Repent of all of your sins. Repent. After you confess your sins, what do you do? You turn from them. You repent. You don't just confess them and say, I'm wrong of such and such. And don't confess without forsaking. Somebody shout hallelujah. Then you forgive others. Yeah. Forgive others. You have to. If you want to be delivered, if you want to be set free, if you want curses broken off of your life, yeah. you have to forgive others. Yeah. Let it go. Somebody said, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Number six, break with the occult uh -huh. and all false religions. Amen. 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 That's what we talked about last week. Get rid of. Yeah. Amen. All of those cultic objects in your house, symbols, souvenir books. Charms and art in your home, all of that stuff, amen, that gives recognition to false gods and demons. Get rid of all of it, amen. Get rid of everything that's not like God. Trust in Jesus, Jesus is the only way. Nobody else can give you salvation but Jesus. No man cometh unto the Father but by Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to talk about prepare. To be released from every curse Amen. on your life. Yeah. I want you to say, I, I prepare, prepare to be released, to be released from, every from every curse on my life. On my life. Or any effect on any of any curses. any curses. Now, I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs. Praise the Lord. Chapter 26. A curse is like a dark shadow over a person's life that shuts out God's blessings. All right. And there are two blessings in particular that the devil will try to stop from coming in to your life. All right. That is the blessing of physical healing and deliverance from evil spirits. Somebody may say, well, that's very narrow. Let me tell you something. Evil spirits specialize in different things. Yes. And they have people thinking, well, this is just a natural cause. Yes, some things are naturally caused. But demons will attach themselves to those things that are caused naturally to perpetuate them and keep them there. When you would normally heal, the enemy will keep that thing coming back again yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. again. Yeah. It, it's possible to have generational strongholds or curses on your life. And many of those curses and strongholds that are on people's lives are passed down. Yes. You may not be under curse. You may just be feeling the effects of it. But let me tell you, you will be delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yes, you will. I'm going to pray a prayer to break every curse today. But I have one more message I'm going to preach from this series. Amen. And that is casting out devils. Amen. You can cast the devil out of yourself. But at any rate, we're going to deal with this topic. Prepare to be released from every curse. A stronghold on your life. So you may not be guilty. But these things are working in your life. And you're wondering why certain things keep happening to you. You're wondering why a certain time of the year is like this bad thing happens. Yeah. When you're around certain people, bad things happen. Certain things are happening over and over in your family. Over and over again. We know the effects of sin bring all kinds of maladies and evils into one's life. 
but there are certain things that people deal with over and over again. And it's unnatural. It's a cycle that needs to be broken. And I'm going to attempt to point out some of those things that happen in folks' lives so that they'll know, hey, this is what it is, and I break it in the name of Jesus. I reverse it in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Lift your hands and shout glory to God. Now, the Bible says in Proverbs 26 and 3, As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, which is a bird, so the curse causeless shall not come. In other words, there is a cause for the curse. There is a cause. The curse doesn't come causeless. There is a cause. Some people have caused curses to come upon their lives, as I mentioned on last week, by going to palm readers, soothsayers, and listening to psychics, going to witches, trying to get deliverance through a witch. Now that is crazy. How can you get set free from somebody that's bound by Satan? And the Bible said in the Old Testament, suffer not a witch to live. Of course, you don't go around killing witches now. No, no, no. This is the New Testament. You do spiritual warfare in the Holy Ghost and bind the work of their hands and let God judge them. He said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. The, the curse doesn't come causeless. Yes, it can come from seeking advice from Satan's servants. It can come from living a life of, of sin, just doing things foolishly over and over again. It can come from murder. It can come from a lot of things, doing all kinds of evil sexual things. It can come through pervertedness. Yeah, those curses can come and, and it can be passed from generation to generation. Yes, yes. Here you are laughing at people who are mentally deranged, making fun of retarded people or mentally challenged people. And then it comes on you. Hello, somebody. Yeah, it comes on you and your children. And you have to plead the blood of Jesus to be set free from it. You're rejoicing because somebody lost their child, amen, in childbirth or whatever, then it happens to you. See, you have to be careful how you act, how you treat people and how you do things. You can bring things on your life. That's why you need to repent. Keep a repentant heart. Confess your sins. Lord, forgive me. Cover me. Cover my family. Cover me in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. See, the devil cannot come across the bloodline. See, a curse does not come causeless. Now, when witches send curses against you as children of God, that's not causeless. You haven't done anything wrong, but they see God in you. And their primary objective is to stop the work of God in the earth. To rebel against God and stop what God is doing in families, in cities, in states, in nations. What God is doing globally. So the enemy uses his servants to block. To try to curse God's people. With sickness, disease, and financial uh, uh, dilemmas. And things of that nature. But let me tell you something. You as a child of God. You may feel these things coming against you. But you have power to speak a word and bind it. You have power to speak a word and reverse it. You have power to speak a word and shut the devil's business down. Because the Bible lets us know what I bind on earth is bound in heaven. What I loose on earth is loosed in heaven in the name of Jesus. Remember the Bible says in St. Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you all power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. you got to know that. you got to know it. You'll feel the effects of warfare yeah. because it is yeah. warfare. Yeah. We're fighting and we have angels. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost on our side. They fight against us. Even as Satan and his angels fought against Michael and his angels yeah. and were cast out of heaven. Yeah. Satan, his witches, his warlocks, his worshipers, and demons come against us. But we don't have to fear. 
But I want to identify some things here so that you'll know to come against me. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The following are examples of possible curses. Mental or emotional breakdown. I want you to take note of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. That's Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. That's a heart attack. Hmm. Wow. Now, let me tell you something. These curses in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, follow the blessings. Now, if you read that chapter, you will see a list of blessings that will come upon you for living for God. Yes. And what he wants to happen. This is God's perfect will for your life. He wants you to be blessed. But he said if you disobey me. Serve other gods. Be. Against my word. I'm against you. And curses will come on you. And then. Of course after the blessings. In the 28th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Comes the curses. And this is one of the curses. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. Madness means you're crazy. Amen. You're mentally deranged. Amen. Believe it or not, a whole lot of folks who are mentally deranged are walking around like normal people. A whole lot of them. They're not in mental asylums. Amen. No, no, no. They're not in Lakeside. They're not chained down or in a straight jacket. One of those jackets that make you like hug yourself. You can't move. No. You have them walking around doing evil things. Some are serial killers. Some are, are thieves. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Some are just sex maniacs. They're doing all kinds of evil things. And they work with you every day. Hello, somebody. Some of them live right next door to you. They have the curse of madness upon them. And, and in many cases, people who are arrogant, who think they don't need God. They're smarter than everybody else. Everybody else is dumb compared to you. Just like Nebuchadnezzar, he was lifted up in himself in the days of the beauty and, and, and pomp of, of Babylon, this great city with hanging gardens. I mean, it was such a beautiful place. Listen, he thought he was this. He was the superpower of the world at that time. He did not think anything of God. He disrespected God. And God cursed him with a curse of madness. And he ate grass like a beast of a field. His fingernails grew like the claws of a bird. Hello, somebody. Hair grew all over his body. He had the curse of madness on him. You do not want the curse of madness on you. See, some people are hard-headed. They just want to keep doing what they want to do. They hear, you know, the voice of God speaking to them. They feel the talk of the Spirit at their heart streams. They know their parents, grandparents, saints are praying for them. But they want to come up with a false religion, something dumb that they think is so smart that nobody else in the family knows about. Ignorance. Let me tell you something. That some of it is right out rebellion. Hello, and they won't listen. God has shown them over and over again. Sometimes God will let you lose it. He'll let the curse of madness, a demon of insanity, come upon you. That's why I say you need to be humble. You need to be meek. Quit being so mean. A lot of times church will run folks off because they're mean. Supposed to be saved, but won't take anything off anybody. Always got something to say. Always want to fight back. Need to humble yourself and pray and, and love people. Yeah. Amen, somebody. You take prayer out stuff, don't even think about what you're saying. Just say whatever comes to your mind. And you don't want to hear any rebukes, but yet you want to give out rebukes all day long. You want to correct folks all day long. You want to judge folks. You didn't judge yourself when you were wallowing in sin and doing things you knew you weren't supposed to done. But now you see somebody else uh, bound or going through bondage. Hello, somebody. 
Uh, and you want to talk about them and call them everything but a child of God. What about the time when you were bound? You don't want to remember that, do you? Well, let me tell you, you got to understand, God works, amen, according to his word. So don't be rebellious. Don't be arrogant. Don't keep pushing. The Bible said, God said, I, I. So what happens is, God allows these things to come on somebody. There have been generations back that rebelled against God and did evil things to people. And that curse of madness came on them and did not leave the family. Did not leave. And it kept attacking people as they were born. Different ones didn't have it and some did have it. And we call it bipolarity or whatever. Some things are natural. There's a chemical imbalance. But the enemy can get in your seed, in your genes, and cause things to happen. Hello. Let me move right on. Mental or emotional breakdown. Tell the devil he's a liar. Now, saints, you that love the Lord, the devil will try to make you uh, 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 receive a curse. Don't receive it. You know you're living for the Lord. You love the Lord. Don't you receive that because you're stretched out. Burdens on you, financial burdens, and I can hear somebody saying that. Oh, I, I, I shouldn't have bought that car. I shouldn't have done this, that, and the other. I'm under financial uh, distress. I'm about to lose my mind. Some of y'all just need to quit shopping. You got a credit card? You don't you know what got comes to kill? Charge. Hello, somebody. That's what's killing you financially. You charge. You go to Wolf Chase, charge. Old Court, charge. How you feel, charge. Huh? But let me tell you something, my friend. Don't let the devil stress you out. And, and, and he'll, he'll, he'll send evil spirits to you to try to pressure you to make you think, oh, you're losing it. You're losing your mind. Oh, it, it's about to leave you. Devil, you're a liar. The Bible says in Isaiah 26 and 3, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Hello, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. You come against that. Don't accept it. Don't receive it. But I feel like I'm losing in a panic attack. Oh, yes. The devil is a liar. You're covered. So, mental, emotional breakdown. Everybody's probably felt like they were losing it at one time. But when it keeps coming to you, when it keeps on coming, that's something that you really have to deal with. And you find yourself in the mirror talking to seven different people, and they're all using your mouth. Hello, somebody. Oh, you better come against that devil. Hello, you call yourself back up. Come on back up, Eric. Come back up. The devil is alive. All you other personalities, you are demonic. You got to go. Get out of here. I bind you so you won't come back. Repeated or chronic sickness. Especially if it's hereditary. Repeated or chronic sicknesses. And believe it or not, some people get sick every spring. Yeah. Some people get sick every fall, yeah. every winter, yeah. some every summer, yeah. for no apparent reason. It just comes on. Some sicknesses are straight up caused by demons. Yeah. All sickness is a result of the original sin from Adam. Yeah. God didn't create man with sickness and disease. Yeah. All of it comes from the original sin. And that's why we can be healed because Jesus, the Lamb of God, said, this is my body which is broken for you. Yeah. Hello. The, the juice or the wine is my blood which is for the remission of sins. But my body is broken for you which points back 1400 years to the Passover when they ate the lamb. They ate the lamb but they put the blood over their doorposts and side lentils to keep death away. It, it was a type of Christ. They ate all of the lamb. And the lamb gave them strength for the journey. What they ate kept their physical bodies. So Jesus is saying, my body is broken for you to be healed. My body is broken for you to be set free from all sickness, disease, and infirmity. 
53, Isaiah said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes, we are healed. Peter said, 60 years after Calvary, by whose stripes you were healed. So, it's in the atonement. But the devil will try to put sickness on anybody in here. Now, some of you, you get it through this hereditary thing. It's headed down. Your mama had heart trouble. You got heart trouble. One of your children got heart trouble. Let me tell you something. That can well be a curse. Amen. Yeah. Sugar diabetes runs in the family. Talk to me, somebody. Cancer, cancer, cancer. Well, I just got this body type. Where did it start? Have you researched your family tree? Do you know what was going on? Huh? Somebody say help to the Lord. Alcoholism, all of these things. Listen, let me tell you something. The devil is a liar and he comes to do what? Kill, steal, and to destroy. When will humanity learn? The devil is not your friend. Well, he helped me get a record deal. He helped me do this. He helped me do that. He did that just to destroy you and use you to destroy others. You're going to ultimately have to pay for it. Hello, somebody. Whatever you get from the devil, leave the devil alone. He's a liar. He's a no good, stinking, rotten dog. Somebody say help today. Deuteronomy 28, 59, and 60. Take it down. Write it down for your notes. 28, 59, and 60 says what? Then the Lord will make thy plagues. Plagues. Wonderful. Wonderful. What? That means you're going to wonder at it. That doesn't mean you're going to make it good. Like it's something positive. The plagues are going to be so terrible. Wow. You're going to wonder at it. Wow. The Bible said, Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy, what? See, you see how it's going down? And you got to look at it like you would a real tree. If that tree is messed up, the seed that comes from that tree and flourishes to another tree will be messed up too. So God is saying, don't create a stronghold. Don't place a curse on your family by doing foolish, crazy things. Don't you do it. Because it can come on you and go straight to your children and from their children to their children and they won't even realize where it came from. Even great plagues and of long continuance and sore sicknesses and of long continuance. In other words, it's going to last a long time, some of these sicknesses. Some of these diseases will last a long time. They will stay there. It's chronic. Chronic sicknesses. It may ease the pain from some of these diseases. But not all of them, and it won't eradicate it. When it's a curse, it cannot be eradicated. It's called to stay there. Saints, we don't have to live with it. We're going to deal with that, but we don't have to live with that. You are born again. And see, the devil tried to put a spirit of fear on you. Your daddy went crazy. They saw him trying to saw a tree down with his teeth. The devil is a lie. Huh? Amen. Your mama crazy, she run down the street in the nude in a birthday suit. That spirit is going to jump on you and one day it's going to happen. That devil is a lie. It's not going to happen to you. And you need to say it won't happen to me. It will not happen to me. And some of y'all, you know, this started happening to my mom at this certain time. It, it, oh, it's going to happen to me. I feel it. I feel that devil is alive. Quit saying that. Quit saying it. You can trap yourself with your mouth. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Those that use it eat the fruit thereof. And you need to be careful of what you're saying. 
Get up every morning. Why are you so lazy when it comes to the things of God? Get up every morning and say, I'm free. I'm delivered. I am made whole through the blood of Jesus Christ. Until it gets in your brain, in your spirit. Until it's a part of your everyday life. Speak positive things. Because the devil is a liar. And a persistent being by nature. See, God allowed this to come on them. And he was saying, I'm, I'm telling you, you don't do what I tell you to do. This is going to come on you. This is going to happen to you. And it's not that I am just waiting, and, you know, to put it on you. I'm just desiring to give it to you. No, your sin, your sin. The Bible says the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. Neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your sins have separated you from your God that he will not hear you. You continually being rebellious, trying to do your own thing in a slick and sly way when God told you, touch not the unclean thing. Get away from it. Hello, somebody. Glory to God. And some of you, you would get to live a lot faster if you had a better heart. You want everybody to die. Now God got to destroy some people. But you want everybody to go down. But when you were doing the same thing. Come on now. You were praying save me Lord. Don't let me die in my sin. Don't let me go to hell. Please Jesus. Long as it's not your brother, your sister, your friend, your mama, your dad. It doesn't mean that much. They died and bust hell wide open. Their loved ones don't want them to go to hell just like you don't want yours to go to hell. Come on now, but if you had a better heart about them, God helped them, deliver them, set them free. Now, if God tells you to stay away from folks, stay away from them. I got so much Jesus, I can disobey God. I got so much of the Lord in my life that I can go anywhere. If God told you not to go anywhere, don't do it. If God tells you to stay away from folks, stay away from them. Look at that prophet. He was so powerful. Amen. That that went to Israel. God told him, said, the land is cursed. Don't even eat anything while you're there. He went and prophesied against the altar. The altar split. Amen. Jeroboam tried to grab it and, 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 and throw him away from the temple. And, and his hand withered up. And he had to pray for him to straighten his hand out. He was a powerful prophet and God told him not to eat anything while he was in Israel. But then a backslid prophet came and told him, God told me that you can eat. Now if God told you not to eat, you ought to wait on God to tell you when to eat. I don't care what prophet come and tell you, God said eat. If he doesn't confirm it, don't eat. This man ate and guess what happened? A lion killed him. Hello, somebody. Destroyed him. And when they came, the lion was just standing by him and his donkey to let you know, hey, I didn't kill this prophet because I was hungry. I killed him because God judged him. Because he did not listen. God told him not to eat. He ate of that accursed food. And God took him out. Oh, and they can say what they want about grace. God's going to take some of these people out. I'm telling you because they're evil. They're not going to get any better. They're trying to destroy you. They're trying to take you out. They're not going to get any better. And God is going to have to take some of these folks out around the world. Some in high positions. Some, amen, in the hood. I'm telling you, God is going to have to let death take them away. Y'all don't hear me. But God will allow sicknesses to come on you. Y'all don't hear me. Oh yes he will. But he's not the one. Amen. To do it. He'll allow the enemy to do it. Come on talk to me somebody. Even though it's his curse. You can't pray a curse that God puts on you all. You can pray a curse of the devil on you. Huh? But, but if God curses you. That's it. You can pray all day long. It's not going anywhere until God gets ready to do it. If he gets ready to do it. I know some folks are going to hear me. We live in, in, in the age of grace, Pastor. You got to understand grace. Yes, I understand grace. But the Bible said, do you sin yeah. that grace may abound? God forbid. Let every man be a liar. 
and let God be true. So you got to prepare to be released from curses. You got to name these things. You got to point them out. Let me hurry up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Repeat it. Chronic sicknesses, diseases. Yeah, you know different diseases that are passed down that families have. Through research now, they'll tell you, you know, give me your DNA. Let me test your saliva and things of that nature, your blood, so I can tell you what diseases you watch out for. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. You see, and you can tell when something is straight up of the devil. The devil torments you. Amen. It's not like a regular sickness. He'll nag you, torment you, pinch you, scratch. I mean, he'll do everything extra. The devil will never do anything right. He'll underdo something or overdo. And when it comes to sicknesses and diseases, he'll torment you. Amen. And it looks like those diseases get worse at night. Amen. Look like people who have different diseases, it get worse at night. Some sicknesses run in folks' family, and it is a curse, and it needs to be reversed. Kidney disease, heart disease, lung disease. And if you know you've had these things, asthma, whatever, come against it that your child won't have it. Amen. You're a child of God. You pray over that baby. You rebuke the sickness and the disease. You mothers lay hands on your stomach and speak it every day. Believe God. Amen. It's time to start speaking. And that whole way until after they get here. Amen. Then you ask God, why did you let them know? Speak it now. Yeah. Praise God. Let worship music be played so the baby can hear it. Healing music, deliverance music, breakthrough music. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Glory to God. Give God the praise right now. Somebody give God a clap offering. Barrenness. Barrenness. Women that can't have children or men. See, when we think about barrenness, we all the time think about the woman. A man can be barren. In other words, he doesn't have what it takes yeah. to make a child. Amen. See, it's a two-way street. Yeah. It's not all on the woman. Huh? Amen. Woman, you can't do no. What about you? <laughs> what about you, bro? Oh, no. But listen, barrenness, a tendency to miscarry, or other related female problems. And you notice, it goes from the mother to the daughter. Amen. The mother got it from grandma. Just pass down. And these things happen. Listen, the word, the word of God is like Deuteronomy 28, 18. Write it down. Write it down. Deuteronomy 28, 18. Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. The fruit of your body is what? Children. That's what that is. That's because. People want to do what they want to do. It's a rebellious spirit. Yes. An evil present and present and rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Amen. You hard-headed and stubborn. Some of y'all stubborn as some of you. You know God doesn't want you to do certain things. But well, you're gonna do it anyway. I'll just take the chance. I'll be all right later on when I repent. You may not get the chance. Amen. You may not get the opportunity. Amen. You might just be the one that gets taken straight out. You might just be the one that receives a curse on your life that you would have to live with because you were hard-headed, wouldn't listen to God, wouldn't listen to anybody. I'm just going to do it anyway. I'm telling you, you're walking into danger. You're walking into death. You're walking into a trap that the devil has set for you. Don't you let anybody make you so upset that you get out of the will of God. Don't you let anybody make you so angry and vindictive that you allow Satan to use you because it's going to backfire. It's going to backfire. Y'all better hear me. And when it backfires, delicate. His eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward his wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children which shall he leave. Which he'll leave. See, that's, that's the devil. Just alienate you from each other. Breaking down the marriage and the family is a spirit. Yeah. Say amen, somebody. Yeah. Glory, I tend to among you, and delicate means he can be sophisticated. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, he could be a person that just won't even walk on the ground. That's what the next scripture talks about, the woman. that won't go outside barefooted. And she's so proper, so clean, so delicate and tender. But because of leaving God, they'll eat their own children. That's what that scripture says. I mean, literally become a cannibal. You don't want these crazy things to get in you, so don't give the devil a chance. Tell somebody, don't give him, give him an inch. He'll take a yard. Don't let the devil ride, because if you let him ride, sooner or later, he's going to try. The Bible lets us know that a curse could be continuing financial insufficiency. Look like every time you get some money, it goes away. Every time money is supposed to come to you, it doesn't come. Everybody get the position and you don't get the position. It's harder for you because there's a curse that was passed down. A curse you brought on yourself because you would not tithe or you would not give to the work of God. Y'all aren't saying anything. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, praise God, write it down, 28, 17. 28, 17. The scripture says, curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Your basket is what you have. Your store is your bank account where you store. And if God put a curse on your money, that means you ain't going nowhere. Or if God allows that curse to be there. And some people have it. My God, now some of you, you're just going through because God is teaching you how to trust Him. God is teaching you to lean on Him. And nobody else. You just hold on. The blessing is going to overtake you. The blessing is going to fill your house. But you know if you haven't been doing the will of God, the financial curse is on you. And it's going to ride you to the grave until you reverse the curse. Let me move on. And some of us are accident prone. It's a curse. You get a new car the same day you run into a pole. Y'all don't hear me. Everybody you hang out with, they call you a jinx. And that's what a real jinx is. You heard people say, he's a jinx, man. Every time he shows up, something happens. Folks in the world, crooks in the world, they say, no, you don't want him with you. If you take him with you, you're going to get caught. If you take him with you, the police are going to show up. Y'all don't hear me. Some folk, they bring demons with them that cause accidents, that cause trouble. And you might be one of those persons that trouble look like things just happen all the time. You need to stop, child of God, and you need to say, devil, you're lying. I break it, I refute, reverse that curse. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. I'm blessed when I sit down. I'm blessed when I get up. I'm blessed when I go out. I'm blessed when I come in. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Catch this, but he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in his season. And whatsoever he does, it's going to prosper. Somebody say, Help, Lord. The devil is a life of family history. Of suicide. Y'all don't hear me? An unnatural death. Untimely death. Oh, you don't hear me? When you have a suicide here, suicide there, a suicide like in every generation of suicide. All the aunties have children that commit suicide. Y'all don't hear me. That is a curse. Untimely death. They die early. They're not even living. Amen. Till they get grown. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Look like tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. That's a curse. You got to come against that curse. You got to speak life. And say, Death, you won't come here. I rebuke you from my family. I command you to go in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Listen to what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 7 17. The Bible says, Be not overmuch wicked. Neither be thou foolish.